Let's take a look at kinematics. Please note that this tutorial was created on an iPad Pro running Animation Pro version 2.5. Your screens may look a little different. I've been asked for many years to add inverse kinematics to Animation Pro, but the mathematics behind it always looked way too complicated. Recently, however, I had one of those light bulb moments where I realised it could be done much, much easier. So I very much hope I've got this right. Now, for anyone not familiar with kinematics, there are two general types when it comes to animation. Firstly, there's forward kinematics. This is the default behaviour for figures in Animation Pro. If I move this figure's upper arm, every body part joined to it, that is, every body part forward of the upper arm, will move with it as shown. If I attempt to move the figure's hand, the hand will only rotate about its pivot point. Secondly, there's inverse kinematics. With inverse kinematics, I can grab the figure's hand and actually move it to a new position, whereby the body parts above the hand will automatically move such that the hand can reach that new position. Now this can make the process of animating a figure a lot easier. Consider this figure of a dragon. The dragon has a long neck, composed of multiple segments. With forward kinematics, moving the head to a new position requires each segment in the dragon's neck to be individually manipulated. With inverse kinematics, on the other hand, I can simply move the dragon's head. OK, so let's take a look at how kinematics are assigned to figures. This can either be done in the Animation Pro Figure Editor or on the animation screen. In other words, you can set up kinematics when creating a new figure in the figure editor, or apply kinematics to any existing figure whilst animating. Let's take a look at the animation screen. Here, I have a brand new animation containing a single blank frame. I'll thus add one of the existing figures packaged with Animation Pro, who I like to refer to as Bob. Now by default, Bob is a forward kinematics kind of guy. If I try to move his hand, it will only rotate. So let's tell Bob that his hand should now use inverse kinematics. To do that, I can tap on the handle that controls Bob's hand. Select kinematics when the image item options pop over appears. And select inverse. That's it. Now when I drag Bob's hand, his forearm and upper arm move as well. In fact, every part of Bob, from his hand all the way back to his hub, will move as well. This, of course, may not be that desirable. So Animation Pro provides a means of specifying how much inverse kinematic influence a body part will have upon its parent. So it's possible to specify how much inverse kinematic influence Bob's hand will have on his forearm, or, in order to fix my particular problem, how much influence his upper arm should have on his torso. So I can tap on his upper arm and move the influence dial all the way down to zero. Now when I grab Bob's hand and move it, only his lower and upper arm will move with it. Of course, I can also set the influence to a low value, maybe 10%. Now I can easily move Bob's forearm and upper arm by dragging his hand, but then pull a little harder to move his body as well. Now you may have noticed that it wasn't necessary to tell Bob's upper arm to use inverse kinematics in order to configure the influence. This will allow you to have a combination of forward and inverse kinematic body parts in your figure. With Bob, for example, I can now move his forearm and upper arm by dragging his hand, but I can still move his forearm and upper arm in the standard forward kinematic way. But I still have a potential problem with Bob's arm. I can, for example, drag his hand in a way that'll put his forearm into quite a painful position. To prevent that from happening, I can set up a constraint on his forearm, that is, I can specify just how far his forearm should be allowed to rotate. Let's take a look. I'll start 
by tapping on the handle that controls Bob's forearm. Next, I'll turn on the Constrain Movement switch. I can then use the dial, as shown, to move Bob's arm to a start position. I'm happy with that, so I'll press the Set Start Angle button, which will set the start of the constraint. I can then use the dial to move Bob's arm to an end position, and press the Set End Angle button to set the end of the constraint. Animation Pro will display a green circular segment representing the constraint, that is, the allowable range of movement, in this case for Bob's forearm. If necessary, you can invert the constraint by pressing the Invert button. Now, if I drag Bob's hand, Bob's forearm will not go beyond the constraint that I just set. Please note that constraints aren't just related to inverse kinematics. If I drag Bob's forearm, which is still using forward kinematics, it will also be constrained. At this point, it's necessary for me to point out a couple of things. 1. When you configure kinematics whilst animating, the settings will apply to the figure across all of the frames in your animation. This means that 2. It is possible that Bob's forearm might already be outside of a constraint on another frame. When this occurs, his forearm will not move until dragged back within the constraint or rotated back within the constraint using the dial here. OK, so let's now take a look at kinematics in the figure editor. I'll start by creating a new figure from a few simple lines. To make it a little more interesting, I'll make a few of them static, and one of them stretchable, so that you can see how inverse kinematics copes with that. You'll see that, whenever I select the handle of a non-static item, a new kinematics panel appears at the top right corner of the screen. This won't appear for static item handles, because kinematics don't make a whole lot of sense for items that can't move. You can tap on the kinematics panel to expand it as shown. This will display all of the kinematic controls that I discussed earlier in this tutorial. I can, for example, select the handle of the last line that I added and tell it to use inverse kinematics. The linked chain of items will now move as shown when I drag that handle. Notice that the stretchable line in the middle of the chain will not stretch when moved by inverse kinematics. Directly moving a stretchable item, that is using inverse kinematics however, will produce a combination of stretching and movement based upon the degree of influence assigned. Static items on the other hand will always remain static. And when you're done configuring kinematics, you can press the small blue arrow button here to minimise the kinematics panel if you'd like a little bit more screen real estate for figure creation. Finally, I'd like to mention that kinematics and constraints only exist to make the posing of figures in a frame easier. That is, kinematics and constraints do not have any effect on the way animations are rendered to produce video or image sequences. And that's it. Thank you for watching. <coughs> I hope you found that as informative as I did. Thanks for watching.